The song that we've just sung about the yearning was about a longing and a searching for the forgiveness of sins. And we read about this throughout the Old Testament. And that longing and yearning was fulfilled at the cross of Christ. We sing many songs and many hymns, don't we, about the cross of Jesus Christ. And many of these were written by Isaac Watts. Isaac Watts was born in 1674 in, a, in an era of, of English history when the Church of England was prevailing. And his father was a school teacher, a school teacher who dissented against the Church of England and was thrown into prison for preaching the cross of Christ. And in fact, Isaac, Yacht, Isaac Watts as a, as a young boy was, his mother would take him to the prison and his father would quote scripture to him, things like this, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but to us which are saved, it is the power of God. Isaac Watts was very privileged. He had the best education that you could have in that day. But he decided that he was going to give all of that back to Christ. And God used him to write 700 hymns, including the hymn that we know and love at the cross. Alas, and did my Savior bleed? And did my sovereign die? Would he devote that sacred head for such a worm as I? In the next century, a little girl was born. She was very ill. And as the doctors tried to treat her illness, the result of that was that she lost her vision and she became blind. Not long after that, her father died. And it seemed like everything, that, all the hope in the world that this little girl could have had was taken away. She was a very positive and a very happy girl growing up. But there came a point in her life where her own search for happiness was not enough. Her positivity and outlook on life was not enough. There was a yearning, a longing for her sin to be forgiven. And she found her way to a revival meeting one night in New York City. And they were singing these words that Isaac Watts had written so many years before. Thus, I might hide my blushing face while his dear cross appears. Dissolve my heart in thankfulness and melt mine eyes in tears. And then the congregation came to this verse. But drops of grief can ne'er repay. The debt of love I owe. Here, Lord, I give myself away. Tis all that I can do. And it was at that moment that that blind young lady sat down in the audience and she repented of her sins and she placed her faith in Christ. And do you know who that blind young woman was? It was Fanny Jane Crosby. And someone like Isaac Watts who had been given so much, he gave all to Christ. And as a result of that, someone who was given not much at all was given everything through the cross of Christ. A well-meaning preacher once said to Fanny Crosby, that it was such a tragedy that she was blind. To which she replied to him, do you know that if at my birth I had been able to make one petition to my creator, it would have been that I should be born blind. What a thing to say. The preacher asked, why? How could you say this, Fanny? And she replied, because when I get to heaven, the first face that shall ever gladden my sight will be that of my savior. And the preacher still didn't understand. He said, well, Fanny, you've never seen anyone ever in your life. How will you know what Jesus looks like? She said, oh, that's easy. I'll walk all over heaven. And when I find the one with nail prints in his hands, I'll know that he's my savior. You see, when Fanny Crosby closed her eyes in death and opened her eyes, she had all sight and all vision in heaven. And it wasn't the many hymns that she wrote that got her there. It wasn't her outlook on life that was positive. Her only hope, her only claim was the cross of Calvary. Upon God. 
to be killed. Just as called for sacrifice, or sin must be condemned. So Jesus bled as all our debt was placed on him. See? 